Hey, it's Kathy. In this video, I'm gonna give you my top closet organization tips. And if you're interested in closet organization tips, I'm gonna give you an updated tour of my closet in case you wanna be nosy. Come on in. So I'm filming this video on the first day of spring and I'm sure a lot of you have started thinking about spring cleaning and specifically purging your closet. When I talk to people about cleaning their closet, I think a lot of people get stuck on where to start. Cleaning your closet is like everything else. You need to start with a goal and listing out your pain points. Now, I like an overarching goal in order to keep me grounded on what's important. The pain points allow me to figure out what specific things I want to change because there are a ton of things that you can do to improve your closet. When I first moved into my condo, my number one goal was to optimize the usage of my space. The closet was laid out horribly. I currently have three sections. These are my dresses, tops, and bottoms. When I first moved in, it was a Builder Basic 2 rod set. So I didn't have a lot of space when I moved in. In order to address that, I had a professional come in and talk to me about adding shelving units or reconfiguring the space. My closet is super small. It's like a five by five room. The professional I called in was really, really helpful. He didn't try to oversell me. We talked about the amount of clothing I had. We realized I needed some space for my dresses and we decided that this was the best place to put the dresses. We wouldn't be able to move this rod because above here is like my alarm system and some other electronics. On this side of the wall, we knew that we could move things around. So we decided to take the existing rod and move it up and add another one. That essentially doubled my space. If your closet is super small and you don't feel like you're utilizing the space in the best way, either call in a professional or go to Pinterest to see if somebody has a similar closet that will give you some ideas on how to best utilize your space. So after we put in the additional rod, I had essentially doubled the space in my closet. But then came my second pain point. At the time, I had all different types of hangers. I had wooden hangers, I had wire hangers, I had plastic hangers. This mismatch of hangers was taking up more space than I wanted. I did some research and I discovered slimline hangers. I know every closet organization video tells you swap out your hangers. Why spend the money when I have a closet full of hangers? Number one for me, the look. If you want your closet to do a 180 and just look more organized, get the same set of hangers. Think about your favorite luxury boutique. They're using the same hangers. It's a vibe. As you can see, these slimline hangers are very, very thin. I got my hangers from QVC. You can definitely get them really, really cheap on Amazon. The only problem with the ones on Amazon is that they break easier. Price is your only concern, Amazon is it. I would look online, QVC definitely has some that have wire on the inside. If I find any on Amazon that have wire on the inside, I will put it in the description. But either way, I'll have links to all the things I'm using in the description. The benefits of swapping out your hangers are they're thin so they take up less space. They make your closet look more uniform. Another thing I like about these slimline hangers is you can get them for different uses. For all my tops and dresses, I use these. For all my bottoms, I use these. I do love the hangers with clips for skirts because sometimes they fall off and this makes sure that that doesn't happen. As you can see for jeans, you don't need the clips. And since you're already swapping out your hangers, make sure you hang all of your clothes in the same direction. So I'm right-handed and so I make sure that everything is hanging to the left. The reason I do that is when I pull things out of the closet, the front of the garment is facing me and I can see it and I don't have to like flip it around. If I was left-handed, everything would be hanging to the right. If I pull things out of the closet, I'll see the front of the garment. It's a small hack, but I'm telling you, if you're going through your closet looking for something, that one extra second is a, is a game changer. So even after I swapped out my hangers, I still was having a hard time finding items. My biggest pain point was I would have four white shirts and I had to go through my whole entire closet and look for all four of them to figure out which one I want. Because of that pain point, the next Next hack I put in was organizing my closet by color and category. As you can see right now, everything is organized, but initially everything was everywhere. I have a ton of dresses, so it made sense for me to have an entire dress section. I have at least 10 black dresses here. In the past, it would take me forever to find them. Now I can just always go to the black dress section. When I'm getting dressed, I often think of the color and type of items I want to wear. I always ask people like, how do you get dressed? And most people are just like, I get dressed off of vibes. I want to challenge you to think a little deeply because I do think we all have vibes of like, I want to look sexy, I want to look this. Once you get past the vibe, there's also a type of clothing. However your brain works is how I recommend you organize your closet. I would say the upside of this organization hack is that it makes it easier for me to to keep this closet organized because after either wash things or take things as a cleaner, it's very easy for me to just put them back in their section. If you see my closet tour video, I talk about how I, I use the Home Edit's Roy G. Biv color scheme. Roy G. Biv is just essentially the rainbow from black to white and all the colors in between. If I ever had to have somebody fix my closet 
for me, I could just tell them, put items next to their friends. I have like three red blazers, they're all together. Pink shirts, they're all together. Changing the layout and the hangers in my closet helped me in terms of space, but organizing my closet by color and type has made the maintenance of my closet so much easier. It was a game changer. I recommend this for everybody. If you're not organizing your closet by least category, I think you're missing out. If you do have your closet organized in some other manner, let me know in the comments. So I love to shop. My next pain point was I was always outgrowing my closet. I was just buying stuff and I would get to the point where my closet would be overflowing and then I would do a purge. It was a never ending cycle. So the hack that I came up with in order to address that issue was a growth plan. A growth plan to me is basically how are you gonna allow your closet to expand? So for example, growth plans could either be one item in, one item out, or you could purge your closet to the point where it's maybe 20% empty and you could add things in until you get to capacity and maybe you do something else. When I purge my closet, I probably purge it down to maybe 20% empty. So I have some empty hangers, some empty spots. That works for me because that allows me to grow within one season. I can buy things. I don't have to worry so much about one in, one out. And when the seasons change and it's time to purge, I can take down my closet to being 20 to 30% empty again. There's a lot of ways that you can grow in your closet, but I do recommend having a growth plan because you're going to buy new clothes. You're going to start off the season, your closet's going to look all nice and organized. And by the end of the closet, you're going to be over capacity. That still happens to me, but it's gotten so much better now that I have a growth plan. I am thinking about getting into the one in, one out. That would require me becoming more disciplined on either selling or donating items whenever I buy something. And y'all know I buy a lot, so <laughs> I'm doing what works for me. Let me know in the comments if you have a growth plan that works for you. The next pain point I had with my closet was whenever it was time for me to get dressed, I would either need a lint roller or some type of finishing thing that I would always have to look in my room for. So in order to address that issue, I put all of the finishing items I need in a little bin and I keep it in my closet. Now it's things like the lint roller, a Tide pen, shout wipes, needle and thread. I have a scissors too, because let me just tell you, if you buy fast fashion, there's always a loose thread. Of course, a steamer and a shaver. Oh. <laughs> the deodorant thing. Everybody's going to have their own finishing items, but for me, this has been so very, very helpful. I think before my steamer was in another room, my lint roller was in my laundry room. It was a mess. When I get dressed, I'm in here and I can just lint roll myself, go look in the mirror and be good to go. I either keep the bin up here or on the floor, depending on, on my space. Get yourself a bin in your closet. So the next pain point I had had to do with my closet door. I was always hanging clothes on my closet door. The clothes would be like hanging right here. It was a hot mess. Think about it in the morning when you're trying to get dressed and you're not sure what you want to wear. I like to pull items together and see how they look. So this closet is in my main bedroom and throwing clothes on the bed was just not working for me. So what I decided to do was create an outfit of the day hanger. For me, it's just a little hook outside of my closet door. I've seen a lot of people with fancy closets that have like a little valet thing. If you have one of those, this ser serves the same purpose. It allows me to put items together. I can see the items hanging up without being distracted by everything in my closet. It allows me to remember what exactly am I wearing? What I would sometimes do is just leave what I was gonna wear in the closet and then, dang, what was I gonna wear? So having this outfit of the day hanger out, outside of my closet, it's been super helpful because it allows me to separate what I'm going to wear from everything else. But it also, because it's so hot, I can easily see my clothes. This has been saving my back. So those were all the hacks I had for my main closet. Let's head over to the other side of the room and look at my drawers. After I finished getting my closet in order, I had to address my drawers. Initially, everything was just a hot mess in here. In this drawer, I have my bras and my workout gear. Up here, I have my underwears. And on the bottom drawer, I have t-shirts and workout tops. My pain point in here was it's really, really hard to get to a lot of the items. And I had everything folded in different ways. It was really hard for this area to look neat and tidy. The hat that I put in in order to make my drawers look as good as they look now is to find and stick to a folding plan. I currently use Marie Kondo's folding plan. If I can find it online, I will post a link to it. Truthfully, you don't need to follow Marie Kondo's plan. I just think you need to have a standardized way of folding. If you think of every time you go to a store like the Gap or Old Navy, all their shirts are folded in one way and that makes the store look so much neater. They always have like a guide like this. I will post a link to the container store guide that I've seen, but you can make one out of cardboard so much easier. I love this. 
it makes my shirts look so good. Standardizing my folding has made everything look pretty and fitted my drawers in a way that makes sense. What I've seen a lot of people do in their drawers is they use organizers. I think that's also great. I did have to use the organizers because of the fact that I've standardized my folding and everything is already the same size. Do what works for you. I do recommend standardizing your folding. Marie Kondo suggests that instead of having things piled up flat, you should have things piled up standing up. It definitely makes it easier to take things in and out of your drawers if you have them standing up like this versus flat. As I sit in my main closet, I always organize my clothing type and color. And as you can see, the bras, the sports bras, and all the leggings are color coordinated. I love the way it looks. A lot of people think I'm crazy, but it always makes me happy to open up my drawers and see them like this. Now we made it to my coat closet. As you can see, I have it organized by color. I can't stop. Like, that's just what I do. This is my most easy to maintain closet. It's one jacket in, one jacket out. The main pain point I was having with this closet though was I started collecting sneakers during the panoramic and I had a whole bunch of boxes up here. The one thing about owning sneakers is you tend to keep the boxes I don't know why. 90% of these shoes I've already worn, so I probably am not gonna sell them, but I just keep the boxes because that's what everybody tells me to. The boxes were looking a hot mess. So one day I was helping a friend organize his closet. He probably had a hundred sneakers and he went through and he organized all of his sneaker boxes basically by type and color. I remember him doing that and thinking, wow, that's really OCD. Until my sneaker collection grew and I had to steal his idea. Before I organized these boxes, every time I opened up this closet, it felt like chaos. Now that everything is organized, I feel so much more zen and happy. So when it comes to storage, I think it should be functional and attractive. Occasionally, I do need to look up something about the shoe. It's easy for me now to find the boxes. I have all my Air Maxes in this section. I have all my Jordans here. I have all my Adidas here. It's so much easier. This sneaker organization hack is something I recommend for all my other sneaker heads. Let me know in the comments if you plan to organize your sneakers after seeing what I've done. So we finally made it to my closet slash office. On this side is closet, on the other side is my desk where I work at. So all of these shoes used to be on the floor of my main bedroom closet. It was not a workable solution because the floor of my closet is very, very small. I will say the only benefit of having my shoes on the floor of my main bedroom closet, it was not going to allow me to grow. The number of shoes that I have has exploded since I've moved into this section of my office. The one thing that's consistent about me is everything is organized by type and color. You guys have seen these units before. This is the Ikea pack system. So Ikea pack systems come in a lot of different sizes. The two for my shoes are the the smaller depth which I believe is around 14 inches and the width of these two is about 29 and a half inches. For my bags I have 39 inch cabinets. I have a video where I talk about how I built this closet. I do need to do an update about this whole system because things have changed but I will say I really really love the flexibility. Because I knew I was only going to be storing shoes in this cabinet I picked the ones that are less deep. The deeper cabinets are better suited for clothing. At one time I thought about moving all of my clothes in this room but I still wanted to be able to work so I just decided to keep this into a shoe in a bag closet. So they also come in different heights. I have the shorter height one. I love it. Not everybody has, has the room to create a whole sneaker closet like I do. If you're having a problem with shoe storage, I definitely think you should hit Pinterest and research ways to address this issue. Before I started watching YouTube videos and seeing these things on Pinterest, I didn't even know this existed. I was able to watch a bunch of YouTube videos, see what people had. If you don't have the budget for a custom solution, I really recommend the IKEA pack system. When I created this IKEA pack system, I knew it was going to be more for dressy shoes. So with my growing sneaker collection, I had a big pain point of not having enough space. Initially, I was just keeping them in boxes, but that wasn't really working for me. So the majority of sneaker boxes open like this. So if there's other sneakers on top of it, getting in and out of them was a hassle. It did make sense to mix my sneakers and my more dressy shoes. Also, do the construction and composition of sneakers. I wanted my sneakers kind of encased in a box versus how I have my dress shoes out in the open. That was just a personal preference. In order to address that pain point, I created a sneaker wall on the other side of this IKEA pack system. I have about 25 of these container store large drop front sneaker boxes. So this easy access is the main reason why I picked the solution because going in and out of sneaker boxes to get you a pair of sneakers was a pain. And I would have like five pairs of sneakers stacked up on each other. The reason I'm not filming in front of it, the glare on the drop fronts is the worst. So I have 25 of these. I'm at capacity. You can either buy a single box or a box of six. I'm going to buy another box of six. I already have two of the six spots reserved. Until the end of the summer, I only want to buy four more sneakers. Don't hold me to it. I'm trying to slow down the, the sneaker purchasing. I do very much recommend these boxes. The only downside of the boxes is that sometimes these doors break. They're made out of a very cheap plastic. 
The first time one of my doors broke, I ended up buying like three extra doors. So there's a little notch that opens and closes these. And I think that's the one thing that tends to break. If you were to buy a pack of six, I recommend you buy at least one to two extra drop fronts. I'm just warning you, you're gonna need them. I will say I'm very happy with my sneaker wall and I'm very happy with my shoe storage. Highly recommend. Only thing I'm working on is my bag situation. I will not show it to you because it looks in terms of the solution, I would say 9 out of 10. The only downside of this IKEA pack system is it's not the most durable, sturdy thing. If I were ever to move, I more than likely would just have to buy brand new cabinets. I would definitely be able to reuse these inside dividers. Let me know if you'd like to see a more in-depth video about my IKEA pack system slash sneaker closet shoe solution. But yes, your girl has upgraded her shoes and my shoes are loving it. Now I just need to get a whole new set of shoes. <laughs> Those were the closet organization hacks that I think made the biggest difference in my small closet. Let me know in the comments which hack was your favorite. And if you like a more in-depth tour of my closet, I'm gonna link that video here. All right, <laughs> see you next time. Bye.